All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire at Home. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online uh, Bible study. And so this is our midweek or end of the week Bible study, just to give you a boost of the word um, where we just want to get into the word of God and, and just see what, sp what the spirit of God has to say to us. Uh, we've been talking about um, the Holy Spirit just leading up to this time of Pentecost um, after the death, burial, and re resurrection of Christ. And so uh, we've been talking about the power of God. We've been talking about praying in the spirit and the benefits of praying in the spirit and the power of God manifesting in our lives. And so I want to kind of continue in that vein tonight. Um, and we're going to just go through the word. Uh, we want you to go ahead and click your shares, your likes and all of that. Listen, y'all send it out to people. Let people know that we're on. Uh, we need your support in doing that. And so we want to get people tuned in here to hear the word of God. So we don't believe it's by chance that you showed up tonight, but we do believe that there will be a word that will be shared. That'll be a blessing to your life. So once again, on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody that's coming in and tuning in tonight. And so let's go ahead and jump into this. There's a lot that I just want to share um, within this word. And uh, I believe it's going to bless you. I believe it's going to bless you. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the Word of God. We do approach the Holy Written Word of God reverently, and we just thank you for it. We thank you for every ear that's anointed to hear, every heart that's open and ready to receive the engrafted Word of God, which is able to save our souls. So we just bless you and we thank you. Now, Holy Spirit, we trust you. We covet your gifts. We covet your gifts to be in operation and demonstration as needed. Thank you, Father, that you lead God and direct us. The Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as the great teacher, the comforter, the counselor, the guide, the one ready to give us peace, the one who shows us things to come, and that you help us and assist us to pray for things that we don't know how to pray for as we are, but you give us that, that unction, that knowing, to know how to deal with the affairs of life. So we acknowledge you tonight as our great comforter, teacher, and God in Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all, praise God. Um, I want you to, if you have your Bibles, I wanna go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter two, 1 Corinthians chapter two. And in dealing with the Holy Spirit, and um, a lot of people are teaching on the Holy Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, talking about praying in, in tongues, things of that nature. And we want to demystify things. We want to make sure that you have good understanding of things and just the benefits and the power that's at our disposal as believers. After Jesus, after receiving Christ as our Savior, I believe the greatest gift you can receive is the Holy, that of the Holy Spirit to come and to abide and live and dwell in you. And then also the power that comes with them, the anointing, the ability to get the job done, the unction to function, as my pastor likes to call it. And so it's God's ability. His, the person of the Holy Spirit abiding in you, but also the power of the Spirit coming upon you to assist us and to help us in accomplishing whatever it is that we need to do. And uh, God has really been dealing with me more about that and just tapping into the fullness of the potential that abides in us. And so when I heard someone share this before and I was sharing it with somebody else that when we talk about potential, sometimes we look at that as, um, a compliment a lot of times when we tell people that they have a lot of potential. Um, but really potential is untapped ability or unutilized ability. And so sometimes it's a thing where a person can have ability, but if they don't tap into it and use it, it does them no good. And so it's great that you have the potential, but now it's time to release it. It's time to release it in its fullness. And so one of the ways that we do that, and we've talked about this in times past and teaching on the Holy Spirit, and teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. And so not only that's an initial sign that you're filled with the Spirit of God, but then too, we want to show the power that comes along with it, the fruit of the Spirit, the characteristics of the Holy Spirit that abides in us for us to walk in. People should see evidence of God's nature, God's power, God's ability in us. Okay, so as we start reading here, I'm going to start reading in... Um, 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. And I want to read it. I'm just going to deal with this chapter tonight. We're going to go through this chapter. I want to pull out some things concerning it, um, even dealing with the Holy Spirit, who he is, what he will do for us. And on Sunday, I, I, I dropped off. I think I left off dealing with the, the visions and the dreams and, and prophecy and just um, things that were going to begin to take place in the earth and amongst the body of Christ where manifestations of the Spirit of God will begin to take place at an all-time high. And so I want us to be skillful in what it is that we're doing to um, where the Holy Spirit is concerned. So let's go ahead and start reading here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. And it says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with, it, with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I, now, I'm, let me just stop here really quick. Paul is here. and this is Paul speaking here. And so he says, God, he says, guys, listen, I'm not coming to you with excellency of speech or wisdom, um, declaring unto you the, the testimony of God. For I've determined, watch this, not to know anything among you, save or accept Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, this is a big statement. Because Paul was a very learned man. He was a man that was very articulate. He was well learned. Um, and he was a person who crucified Christians. But for him to make this statement meant, I'm going to put aside everything that I've learned or I thought I knew and say, listen, I don't know anything except Jesus Christ and him crucified. So that's a statement of humility for him, for him to humble himself and to deal with any pride that's there, to now submit himself to the knowledge of God, to submit himself to now God's telling God, okay, God, I'm a blank slate. I'm a clean slate for you to deposit in me, to give me revelation, to give me wisdom, to give me understanding. And so we got to have that same posture and position to say, okay, I know what I've learned, but I'm always open to be teachable. You always got to have a teachable spirit. You always need to have a teachable heart. Because Holy Spirit may want to come in to share things with you that you thought you knew. So we always got to be ready and open to receive from God something fresh, something new. And because we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. So that means everything that we currently know is not all that there is to know. So you always have to be open to greater insight. So he says this. And then in verse 3 he says, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So it's not about my preaching. It's not about my articulate speech. It's not about all these fancy words that I can use. It's not how well I can be a great orator. Listen, I come to you not in man's wisdom, but I come to you in God's power. I come to you empowered by the spirit of God that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So our faith should be in the power of God. Our faith should be in the one who brings that power, the Holy Spirit himself, to abide, live, and to dwell in us. And to be, watch this, remember, in the book of Acts 1 and 8, it says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Okay, so now when we receive the Holy Spirit to live, by, abide, and dwell in us, we have this power. We have this dunamis power, this power that changes and rearranges things. And for many years, many people have not tapped into the fullness of this power. But we want to start tapping into this potential, this power and this ability that we have on the inside of us by the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's start digging into this now, because really where verse 6 starts is really where I want to start digging into some things because we've talked about, and I've been, I've been saying this, I don't know how long now it may have been over the past year, two years, three years or whatever that God told me to just start telling people, this is a time you need to start praying in the spirit more than ever that you need to, we as the body of Christ, those that are believers, those that have the Holy spirit abiding on the inside, those that have this ability to pray in tongues, you need to exercise that. You need to begin to pray like this. And so we talked about some of the, the benefits of praying in the spirit. 
In the book of Jude 20, it talks about building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, building yourself up on your most holy faith. Your faith is stirred up when you pray in the spirit. Your spirit man is charged up. It's like just like a battery It's charged up. You get energy. You get strength when you pray in the spirit. But now watch this. Watch also what begins to happen as we begin to pray in the spirit. He says, how be it? How be it? We speak wisdom. Verse six. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect or that word perfect is mature. He says, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes or that word princes is rulers of this world that come to not uh, come to not a nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So we speak, we're able to speak God's wisdom, but it calls it a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world, watch this, which God ordained before the world unto whose glory? Unto our glory. See, and that, oh man, this is going to be good because he wants us to speak forth this wisdom so that now this word glory here is by definition um, to be renowned, fame, prestige, honor, distinction, kudos. So it's like God wants us. In other words, let me just break it down. He wants you to blow up, but he wants, watch this. There's wisdom that's available for your life. Whatever it is that God has called and created you to do, there's hidden wisdom available. This wisdom, we can begin to speak out of our mouths, but it calls it a mystery. Okay, let's keep reading. It says, um, then it says, verse seven, but we speak the word of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Verse eight, which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it for had they known it. And this goes back to for none of the rulers. Remember the rulers of this world, um, spiritual wickedness in high and heavenly places. Remember that out of um, Ephesians. So now we're talking about now principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high and heavenly places. So now watch this. If they would have known, they would have watch this. They known it. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they knew why Jesus came, they never would have crucified him. Now watch this. Just that statement alone shows that demon forces don't know everything. They don't know everything. I don't know what you've been taught. I don't know how you've been taught, but they don't know everything. Satan does not know everything. See, you got to get out of your mind that Satan is just anti or just opposite God. It's like he on, he's on God's level and God's class. He's just the bad version of God. No, Satan is a fallen archangel. He is not God. He is not omnipotent. He is not omniscient. He is not omnipresent. He does not have God's qualities or characteristics. We got to remember this because so many times we keep thinking like Satan, he, he just knows everything that's going on. See here it shows he doesn't know everything that's going on because if they would have known what was going on, he wasn't smart enough to figure out that Jesus came in the form of a human so that it will be his demise to come back, to take back over what Adam lost in the beginning. Okay, let's, let's keep going here. Let's keep going. Now, this is important. This is so important. All right. He says, which none of the princes of this world knew, because we speak the word of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, Eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God, now watch this, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Now we've heard the scripture quoted many a times. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. It's almost like saying, don't nobody know what God got prepared for you. 
But it says, hold up. Now this word in verse 10, but that means it just canceled out what was right before it. He says, but God hath revealed them unto us. How? By his spirit, for the spirit, the Holy Spirit, searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So for those of you that want to know the deep things of God, he's showing you how to tap into the deep things. He's showing you how to reveal these mysteries. He's showing you how to bring up this wisdom. He says, watch this, for no man knoweth the things, now watch this, no man knoweth the things of a man, save or accept the spirit of man, which is in him. All right, this is your born again human spirit. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. All right. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Okay. So now we receive the Spirit which is of God. This is the Holy Spirit here. That we might know, watch this, why did we receive him? Why did the Holy Spirit come to abide in us? This is one of the reasons. He came that we might know the things, the things, the things that are freely given to us of God. So he wants to reveal to us everything that's been given unto us by God, which things, watch this, also we speak. So we speak the things. We can speak out those things not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. So he says, now, wait a minute. He's given us this wisdom. We can speak this wisdom. He's given us the Holy Spirit to speak out the things and to watch this, to show us the things that have been freely given to us by God, which things we speak. We can speak these things out. It's the same thing. Oh man. Um, Paul said, I think it was in um first Corinthians 14. Um, hold your hold your place here. I'm gonna go to 14. I'm gonna come back here really quick. I think it was in verse 2, chapter 14. Um, yeah. It says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, um, first Corinthians 14, verse 2. He says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Remember, he speaks mysteries. So we just saw that in chapter two, we saw that we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So how do we speak in a mystery? We speak in a mystery by praying in tongues. So when we pray in other tongues, we're speaking forth wisdom. We're speaking forth the things that are freely given to us by God. Remember which things also we speak. We're going back to first Corinthians two. And so now he says this. Now this is why he says, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man, the things uh, which God hath prepared for them that love him. Okay. So there's something that God has prepared for all of us, your individual life. He says, now, these things that have been prepared for you, you can pray this stuff out. You can now, it is no longer to be hidden from you, but it's hidden for you. So see, Satan can't even know what God has in store for you. Satan can't peek into your future. Satan don't know everything God got in store for you. His job is just to steal, kill, and destroy. He just want to get you out of the way. But watch this. When we pray in the spirit, we can now pray out godly wisdom. We can pray out those things. God, what is it that you have in store for me? I can watch this. Glory to God. I pray out the will of God when I pray in tongues. Remember in, um, in Romans 8, 26 through 28, it talks about the Holy Spirit making intercession for us according to the will of God. So when we pray in the spirit, we are praying out the will of God. When we pray in the spirit, we are praying the perfect prayer because the Holy Spirit who abides in your born again, human spirit will now watch this, your spirit that knows everything there is to know about you. Remember what knows the things of a man save or accept the spirit of a man that abides in him. 
And what thing knows this, um, God but the Spirit of God? But see, now the Holy Spirit, who knows everything there is to know about God, abides in your born-again spirit that knows everything there is to know about you. So when these two come into contact and alignment, the Holy Spirit will pray through us, for us, according to God's will, perfect will, according to our lives. So when we pray, lo cumbre frasecana, le remando cumbre freshetekene, Brevrando do cumbre. What I'm doing is I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to begin to pray through me for me. What I'm doing is I'm praying out wisdom. What I'm doing is I'm praying out mysteries, divine secrets. I did a teaching um, at our prayer convention. Man, this was like in 2009, I think, or 2010. It was three nights. And man, I'm telling you, I did this, this teaching on having faith for mysteries. And I mean, just the word of God on all three nights. And I think that third night, man, something hit, even while we were praying. And just the power of God hit that room because the revelation and the insight, the faith began to come to the people through the preached word of God, the word being taught line upon line, precept upon precept. And so I think I might have to go up back out and pull that back out again and really just dig in. And But a lot of this stuff that I'm sharing now even came out of that. And so when I got revelation of it, then a hunger to pray in the spirit more begin to take place. And the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you now, God is dealing with me. When we keep saying God is dealing with us, don't forget, remember, we've already talked about these things that God, Jesus said it like this, I won't say anything unless the Father commands me to say it. Then likewise, he says, I'm gonna give you another comforter. He says, okay, now the Holy Spirit also won't say anything. The Bible says it, only that which he hears shall he speak. Only that which the Father has released shall he speak. So when we are saying God is talking to us, listen, he'll talk to us through the person of the Holy Spirit who abides in us and dwells in us to give us wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and insight. He'll lead us into all truth. He'll guide us. So listen, you have a guide. You have a spiritual guide abiding in you at all times to lead God and direct you and one of the ways you get that wisdom churning, you get it coming up, you get it going, is by praying in the spirit, praying in other tongues. As you take time, I'm telling you, we're gonna have to start taking some time, y'all. We're gonna get back to this, to, to the level and the degree in which we did, even in the beginning of this ministry. I mean, before services, we would do it. Before, I mean, we would have corporate prayer, we would pray in the understanding, and we would pray in the spirit. And there's something about praying in the spirit. It's something about getting yourself charged up and stirred up. I'm telling you, now watch this. It's, it's this one word that you got to remember. It's called expectation. When you pray like this, you got to expect to receive and to hear what you're praying out. Because a lot of times people spend time praying like this, but don't have a level of expectation to hear. You got to be on the lookout for the wisdom. What is it that's dropping in your heart? Stuff that's coming up to your mind, coming up out of your spirit, being illuminated to your mind is God's wisdom. But sometimes we just dismiss it as a thought, not realizing this is the Holy Spirit speaking to us based off of what we've been spending time praying out. Things come across our lap. Things come across us, answers to things, business ideas, concepts, wisdom to know how to handle family and ministry and business and whatever it is, your health. Whatever it is that's going on, the wisdom is there. He says, this wisdom we speak. And I like this. He says, now we have received, verse 12, I'll go back here again um, in 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. Now we receive not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, um, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, so not in your your understanding, but the Holy Ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But the, watch this, but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So sometimes our understanding, this is why it's important to renew our minds to the word because the word and the spirit agree. But then too, what happens is the natural man, the flesh side of you, the, that natural part of you, sometimes it's hard to receive what God is trying to share because it seems foolish to you, 
okay, how can I go after this thing? You know, like, like, like what Mary said, how can this be seeing I know not a man? How can I be pregnant and I ain't never had sex with nobody? How can I be pregnant and I ain't never touched, I ain't never had intercourse with a man? He says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And then that thing, you're going to be found with child. Something supernatural. It makes no sense. Because, yeah, how, how does that look to her going to Joseph saying, um, hey, Joe, I, I'm pregnant, but I ain't had sex with nobody. I ain't been cheating on you or nothing. Okay, look at Joseph. He gonna have, he gonna look at her like okay you lying ain't no way you can get pregnant without somebody else being involved without a man being involved in this situation there won't no in vitro fertilization and all of that back then listen you had to have a man and woman come together to produce a child so for her to come and say okay I'm with God's child that's foolishness unto men now. Watch this, because God wants to do supernatural things. Scripture that says that God is going to and fro looking to do great exploits through people. And a lot of times he can't get the job done because in our natural mind, we'll shut down the power that we're trying to pray out, the wisdom we're praying out, because now our minds have not caught up to where the spirit already is. Your spirit man has been sealed by God. Your spirit man has God's nature abiding in it. So your spirit man picks up things and it's like in your heart you got it. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so now your spirit man gets excited about stuff, but then your head gets involved to now talk you out of what God just deposited in your spirit. So we need to get ourselves in a position to not only hear God, but to at least strengthen our faith enough to act out on the wisdom that we're speaking for. This is why renewing our mind. This is why Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But then in the Amplified it says that good and acceptable and perfect will, that's for you. What is it? that God is saying for you. What is it that he's telling you to do? It's time for you to get in your prayer closet and you to spend time. Okay, God, I, after I'm hearing this, my faith is stirring up concerning this. And so now I want to begin to pray out this stuff. I want I need to pray out. What, what's, what does my future hold? What is it that you want me to accomplish? What is it that you want me to do? I set myself now, Holy Spirit, to allow you to pray through me concerning my life, concerning this earth, concerning world affairs, concerning my family, concerning my community, whatever it is. And so now I come before you and Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you to pray through me for me according to the perfect will of God. Reveal to me the things that are freely given unto me by God. The things right now that I'm going to speak these things out, these things I'm going to speak out in the name of Jesus. Now, see, I like this. Um, I want to uh, I want to see if this is um, it has come from the word. Uh, it was the teaching long ago. This word things I want to see. Because uh, I know like in the uh, the Hebrew, it was a word devar. So when you speak like when you speak words, you speak things. So when you begin to speak the word of God, when you begin to speak even by the spirit of God, you're speaking the thing into existence. What is it? Okay, this is good. So what is it that you need to come into existence? It's time to speak it forth and then have the corresponding action to line up to what it is you're speaking. So now even with us having times of prayer, we need to reignite prayer again like never before. We've been praying, but we need everybody's involvement now. We want, I want everybody's involvement. It's time to ignite some things. There's answers that are already in you, but if you're not generating the answer through your discipline of praying consistently, then you got all of this ability and all this potential at your disposal, and you ain't using none of it. And God is saying you need to now go ahead and start plowing in the spirit now. I want you to begin to pray like you've never prayed before. I want you to now believe like you've never believed before, to pull out wisdom, to pull out understanding. You have wisdom that will outshine anybody in your classroom. You have wisdom that will outshine anybody on your job. 
The person of the Holy Spirit abides in you. You got answers for your company already there. You got answers for your business already there. You got answers for your family already there. And it's time to pull this wisdom out in the name of Jesus. And we're going to do a little bit of it tonight. We're going to do some of it tonight. He says now, verse 14, these things are spiritually discerned. He says, because they are foolishness to the natural man. But then it says in verse 15, but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Watch this. But we have the mind of Christ. It's time to get the mind of Christ. Come on, let's, let's bring it from a spiritual to a practical thing. The spirit man who has the Holy Spirit can pray out this wisdom, pray out this stuff, where now it can be deposited into your mental faculties. There, there's been wisdom that I can tell many a times while I'm talking to people, counseling people, sharing it with people, and I know if I'm ministering or preaching, there's stuff that just comes straight out of my spirit. It didn't come out of my head. It didn't come out of my notes. It didn't come out of my study time. It came straight from the Holy Ghost. And I knew it was that. I knew it was God saying something. And I'm like, man, that's good. And I was saying that, and I'm the one speaking it. But I knew it wasn't me. I knew it was the wisdom of God flowing out of me pertaining to that situation that I was dealing with. And so now, watch this. Now that that wisdom is there, I can now capture it, write it down record it, remember it, and go back and put it in my compartment of my mind and my memory so now I can study it, meditate on it. This is why it's good to capture things, man. As you're praying, have a journal, have something that you can write down. Sometimes I record stuff on my phone while I'm praying and I feel that the word of the Lord is coming forth. Then I put on my voice memo. So that way I can go back and remind myself what God said at that moment because I want to capture that wisdom because God is not obligated to repeat himself. So I want to make sure that I, that I take it seriously when I'm hearing from God. So we got to make sure that we're hearing correct from him. So now when we begin to pray, I want you to begin to watch this. God, we talked about this Sunday, God will speak to you in dreams and visions. He'll show you things to come, whether it's in the sleep state, because sometimes while you're in a sleep state, you're at a place where, you don't have as many distractions and he can now get to you what he's trying to get across to you. Sometimes there've been moments where um, there are a couple of times where I fell into kind of like how Peter did and acts into a trance. And I saw something spiritual take place in my life and God was speaking to me concerning my life and concerning some things. This only happened once or twice in my lifetime where that, that's how God spoke to me. But primarily he speaks to us by the inward witness. And so he'll speak to our born again spirit. And so we'll get that unction on the inside in the um, book of uh, first John uh, two and then verses uh, 20 and 27. Uh, first John chapter two, verses 20 and 27. It says, but you have an unction from the Holy one and you know all things. You have an unction of the Holy one and you know all things, but that, um, but the anointing which abideth in you teacheth you all things, that's verse 27, and you need not that any man teach you, but that anointing that abides in you will teach you. See, the anointing comes when the Holy Spirit comes. When the Holy Spirit shows up, anointing shows up. To anoint means to rub on, to smear on. It's God's ability upon our ability, God's super upon our natural, to, give us, to get us to live a supernatural life, to do stuff we couldn't do in our own ability. The wisdom is there. No, you better hear me now. You better hear me. So now this is going to amplify. This is going to amplify. Because when God commanded me to go teach his people who they are, this is part of that. He says, there is, this is the time where my people need to pull and draw on the wisdom, the intellect, the knowledge, the understanding, the forth telling, the foretelling of things to see things in the future so that you can come back in your present and prepare for what's ahead. See, if you can see, if you can see into the future, if Holy Spirit shows you what's about to come, he may give you an idea to now develop an invention that'll solve a problem that's not here just yet. And that he'll show you stuff ahead of time. He'll show you what to prepare for. He showed me to get ready to be completely digital years ago, not knowing that we were going to be in this time. He starts speaking certain things to me that now he's bringing back or I've already written down. It's like, okay, God, I see you. Okay. I know I heard you correctly. 
when you spoke these things. And so you got to position yourself. Don't, don't, oh man, somebody, don't waste all the time you've been praying. It's not wasted time, folks. There's some things you've been praying for other people, but there are a lot of things you've been praying for yourself that has not come to pass <clears throat> because now you got to cooperate with it. So now it's time to cooperate. Let me, let me end right here. I'm getting ready to end, but I feel this coming up in my spirit. And then the thought came up. Don't be afraid. So I ain't got time to go do a bunch of explanation. Either you're going to receive it or not right now. Don't be afraid to go after. This is why God told me in the word of the Lord at the end of last year, coming into this year, he says, tell my people to come to me and ask me what it is I want for them. Don't just come to me asking me for what you want, but come to me asking me to reveal to you what it is I want for you. Because a lot of times your believing is smaller than his. He wants something greater for you, but you're afraid to even ask him because now that means it's going to challenge you to come out of your comfort zone. And so God is saying, I want to pull you out of your comfort zone into the things that you've been speaking that have been freely given unto you. And so that you can begin to walk in, live in, drive in, wear, uh, abide in. Listen, some of y'all been wanting to go on vacations for years. God said, this is your time now for you to enjoy my creation. I created all things richly for you to enjoy. And he says, it's time for enjoyment. You're going to work hard and play hard. You're going to still serve me, serve me in this generation. You're going to serve this generation. Listen, it might be a dirty job, but you're going to look good doing it. You're going to look good doing it. It's time for you to manifest the fullness of who you are. So as you go into areas as an ambassador, you are going dressed with the power, dressed with the wisdom, the articulation of what to do when you go into countries, when you go into communities of how to build it up, how to raise it up. There'll be ideas, witty inventions and concepts. There will be supernatural partnerships. There'll be people who have the money, but you got the vision. And so there'll be resources already waiting for you to show up and the wisdom of God that you've been praying out. And God will cause you to be able to be a generator of resources, a generator of wealth, of wealth and riches, generational wealth and blessing, not only for you, but for your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. And it's this time around. Listen, I don't care if you've been in, if you're in your 70s, 60s, 50s, whatever you are, God is saying this, the time is now, do it now. And you will now stop a cycle that has perpetuated for years and generations. It's going to stop with you in Jesus name. Praise God. So I don't care how long it's been started now. The wisdom is there started now. And for some of you, you, there are things that you've known to do, but it's like there's a force that's been trying to contain you from getting it done. That's been trying to hold you back from setting up the meeting with people that you know you need to talk to because Satan is trying to make you feel stupid in your mind to say, okay, I'm ashamed to even go and ask for help because I'm too old to have been in this same situation all these years. But God is saying, I need for you to break that thing off of you. And now God has already freed you from it. You need to resist it in the name of Jesus and break through it. And now say, okay, and humble yourself enough to receive the wisdom of God that he may bring through another individual. Now watch this. Sometimes when God shows up, you praying out wisdom, it might come directly to you. It might come through someone else. You might read it in a book, hear it on a blog, a podcast, whatever. But all of a sudden the wisdom is being revealed, the information to get the job done. And so now is the time. Now is the time for you to arise and shine and allow the glory of God, the glory that's supposed to come for your glory, your glory, yours and mine. People ought to see the good works and glorify your father in heaven. It's okay for you to prosper in him in every area, spirit, soul, body, in your finances, in your relationships, in your purpose, whatever it is. So now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. So we're going to do this. We're going to do this. It's time to pray these things out. It's time to dig deep. Not only will it be for your personal life, but also for the community, for this earth, for the advancement of the kingdom of God to go into spheres of influence and to now dispossess. When I mean that, put aside, take authority over principalities and powers 
that have been ruling over governmental systems and superstructures in areas. I'm telling you, the word of the Lord came back again about Silicon Valley, about people who have been going into those areas. And some people secretly have made pacts with the devil to say, if you get me to this place, I'll serve you. That's what, that's what Satan tried to get Jesus to do. He took him on that pinnacle, that mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. He says, I'll give you all of this if you bow down and worship me. And Jesus resisted and rejected. See, that was a temptation because that's why Jesus came back. He came back to reclaim what Adam turned over. So you got to understand this. This earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. Yes, Satan has his lease in this, in this earth. And that lease is about up. That time is about up. And so now, even in this, God has given us authority, even as Satan is working in this world system, we still have authority to rise above it and to now deal with it from a kingdom perspective as we go into areas to infiltrate. And so we're to now create systems. We're to create structures. We're to now create um, economic structures and systems. We function by the kingdom of God. We are, well, listen, we're, we're in this world, but not of this world. See, all of this stuff is tying together. The culmination of the glory of God is coming to a head where God's global glory is taking place. That God wants to know, there are things that the Bible has talked about that have been prophesied that will come to pass. So even in the process though, Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. So even as we deal with systematic things, system uh, uh, superstructures or systems speaking truth to power, God is going to elevate you personally, but also as he elevates each individual personally, that's elevating the body as a whole globally. And so these are people who are going into these spheres of influence and ministering to as many people as they can to pull them out of darkness into the marvelous light, to go into the areas of arts and entertainment. And it was like, I saw like models and people, um, on, on photo shoots and sets, that as they go and minister the love of God, people who've been bound by cocaine and drugs and certain spiritual things and practices that they've been practicing, their eyes will be open to see that the power of God, God wants to manifest his power at an all time high. He wants to show and flex who he is in the earth to demonstrate his love, but also to demonstrate his hand of strength in the earth. And he wants to use his church to do so. So I want you to be ready. And as you begin to pray, God wants to bring some of you out of your comfort zone. Some of you want to go into those areas. Some of you want to, to come out of your, your normal mundane lives. He says, I'm about to shake some stuff up. I'm about to shake some stuff up. So you might as well go ahead and get ready because you've been praying stuff in the spirit that you don't even realize for yourself. And now when the manifestation begins to take place, you telling God, hold up, wait a minute. It's happening too fast. I won't, I won't pray. I ain't want all of this. No, his eyes have not seen nor ears have heard, but watch this. Either has entered the heart of man, but watch this. You've been praying those things. You've been speaking your future. You've been speaking things to come to pass. And God is trying, he's trying to disrupt your daily routine now and trying to get you to a place that now you're going to come to a point that you're going to position yourself to fully receive everything you've been speaking in Jesus name. Hey, I'm just delivering the message. He's, he's setting you up. He's setting you up for success. He's setting you up for success. Sometimes people are afraid of success. They're afraid of their routines being altered because we're so creatures of habit. It's new habits. Now It's new habits. Get yourself intentionally out of your mundane, your, your regular normal schedule. Get around new people. It's this one word, exposure, is about to take place for you. Exposing yourself to new things. And sometimes you have to intentionally expose yourself. Put yourself in certain rooms. And God's favor is already upon you. It's already upon you. I'm telling you. Sometimes go to a conference. Go visit somewhere you haven't visited before. Do something out the ordinary, shake something up, and it's going to help. It's going to start setting a precedence and a pattern for you to come out of what you've been doing on a regular basis. I'm telling you now. And it'll be your new normal. Because you said, if you prophesied, some of y'all been pulling levers for years. 
You've been sowing money for years and still have not seen the goodness of God manifest. It's time now. All of that stuff is, is God. It's good. But it's like, okay, God, I've been doing this. I've done this. Why has it still happened yet? Certain things, no matter how many times people prophesy over you, you have control over your life. You have control over it. You can now make something happen. He says this, remember, Joshua 1 and 8, but this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate upon it day and night and observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then, for then, for then, thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. You make your way prosperous. God has already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. He's given you his spirit. He's giving you his word. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you functionality. He's giving you resources. He's giving you relationships. And some of you are not tapping into the relationships that God has given you. God doesn't be strong about that. It's like, it's time for you to tap into relationships. Sometimes if you just ask, people will help just because it's you asking. Sometimes just that simple because you keep thinking you got to do it by yourself. I'm trying to stop, but I keep hearing. It's like I can see somebody, you're receiving it, you're hearing it. It's just like the wisdom of God that's flowing. Just ask. Just ask. Nothing. Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Is there anything too hard for your God? Is there anything too hard for God? You need to ask yourself that when you look at that house. Is there anything too hard for God? God, stretch my mind. I know I've been praying for the three-bedroom, but you might want to give me a five- or six-bedroom. Show me what you want to give me. Show me what you want to give me and help alter my mind to receive what it is you want to give me. Come on, God. I'm going me and you. It's me and you now, God. Some of you, is almost like you're wrestling with him. He, he wrestling with you. It's like, come on. I'm trying to get you there. I'll keep speaking to you. It's, that's me that's nudging you. That's me that's making you uncomfortable. That's me that's pushing you. That ain't Satan. That's me trying to push you out into. I want you to swim in the deep waters. Remember, even the deep things of God, he's trying to manifest. Man, who? I don't know who that, my goodness. Who this is for? I know who it's for. It's for everybody. It's to push you to the next level. It's to push you. Glory to God. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, Lexi, I saw this just as quick. I saw you in a room. I'm speaking to my media person there. I saw you in this room, but it's a bigger room with cameras and the camera crew all around, and you directing. You running it, and it's there. It's there. I, the creative teams, all of that is there. I'm telling you, God knows what it is that he innately put in you for his glory. Production. Production. Your spirit is a production center. Your spirit is a production center. You've been created. That's part of what dominion means, to have dominion, productivity. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's time to produce. Hallelujah. Okay. I ain't, I'm finished. I'm finished. Glory to God. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff there. Amen. Praise God. Father, we just thank you. Glory. Come on. I want y'all to begin. We're going to pray in the spirit. We pray out. Oh, yeah. We pray out everything that's freely given to us, Father. Which things we speak. Yeah. Not in, yeah. Well, wisdom. Man's wisdom teaches. But your wisdom teaches. Comparing spiritual things to spiritual things. We thank you for expansion. Expand our capacity to receive. We ask that. New ideas, witty inventions, ideas, and concepts. Yeah. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Wisdom for our family. Wisdom for our homes. Wisdom for our businesses. Wisdom for our ministries. Wisdom to govern, to rule. Yeah. I come against wicked devices that have tried to get men and women of God off track. I command the righteousness of God to rise up strong in them. People that you have positioned, Father, strategically in politics. They will not succumb unto the wicked pressures around them, but they will arise and shine. For where the righteous reign, the city rejoices. And so we thank you for it. We pray over the commerce of this city. 
We pray over the school systems now. We pray over the inner cities right now and even the counties right now. We speak life. We speak up wherever you are right now. You speak over your area. You speak right now. We rebuke. Yeah, and dispossess principalities and powers right now in the name of Jesus that will try to tear down school systems, that will try to tear down administration. And Father, we call the money to come in and we speak the blessing over these areas to flourish and to turn into the Garden of Eden. And so, Father, we thank you for it in the name of Jesus that we speak life into the people of those areas. We speak life into the ground and the soil. We speak life right now into the natural resources that they will come forth. We speak forth land. We speak forth property in Jesus' name. We give you praise for it, Father, and we give you glory that we receive it for pennies on the dollar. We thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' name. We thank you that you're ever increasing us. We thank you that we're going from faith to faith and glory to glory. And we magnify you and we glorify you that we do business well, for we have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within us. We thank you for people coming out of darkness into the marvelous light of your dear son. We come against the spirit of murder. We come against the spirit of suicide. In Jesus' name, we thank you right now, Father, that you disrupt those things. We speak peace, wholeness, and shalom, nothing missing, broken, or lacking. We rebuke the spirit of poverty right now over every project in this city. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, for it. We thank you that you're sending men and women to those areas. We thank you right now that men and women are being raised up to bring people out of darkness into the marvelous light of your dear son. And we give you glory and praise for it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you're raising up pastors and leaders, ministry workers, Father, ambassadors to go into these areas, whether it's in ministry, whether it's in the marketplace, wherever they are needed, Father. We thank you that you're strategically placing people right in the midst that it'll cause a transformation and a change and a revival and a revolution to take place and a great awakening to take place in Jesus' name. And Father, we give you all glory, all praise, and all honor. And we call in the people and the resources from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Earth, we command you to yield forth your increase now in the earth in Jesus' name. We thank you for it, Father. And we give you praise and we give you glory for it. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We speak forth. We command the apostles and prophets to come forth. Yeah, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. We command, yeah, the governmental structures of heaven, governmental systems of heaven. Yeah, yeah, we speak into this earth the divine will of the Father. Yeah, not our will, but let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father. We thank you for it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah, with long life. Yeah. And in the name of Jesus, people who have been holding back, we were big, yeah, people who have been holding back antidotes, doctors that have been holding back antidotes, companies that have been holding back antidotes for things that need to be revealed are coming forth now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Real most that we, yeah, we ask that you disrupt even the medical systems right now that are robbing people of opportunities of health and longevity. We thank you for divine health. Yeah. Yeah. We thank you for wisdom to eat healthy. Wisdom for the right combinations for people's bodies right now. And we shut down whatever medications are shutting down organs. We command it to cease and to stop now. And we command for a reversal to take place. We speak health and healing that those people will come off of those medications. Show people, Father, now what it is that they need to do in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Hallelujah. Well, amen. Praise God. Praise God. See, that's what happens when we start praying in the spirit. This, this was just a demonstration, a small demonstration of what begins to take place even in your personal prayer time. 
as you pray in the spirit, you'll begin to pull up things and the Holy Spirit will start pulling up things even for you to pray. It'll come out of your spirit and be illuminated to your mind to begin to now declare and decree things in the earth, to change and rearrange things. Listen, God can't do anything in this earth except a man or woman pray. We got to, because we have authority in this earth. God in his sovereignty has given us authority, has delegated that authority and that responsibility to the church. We need to pray things into existence. And we need to speak life into areas. And we need to go into areas and declare and decree things in Jesus' name. Praise God. Well, y'all, if you want to get born again, you get born again tonight, listen, just say this simple prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. Now, Father, I ask that you fill me with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, that I will speak forth wisdom, that ability to speak forth wisdom and ideas and things that have been freely given unto me. That's you I want you to receive now by faith. You ask God to fill you, he'll fill you. Yeah. Jesus said, you ask the Father, he'll give you another comforter. He'll give you another comforter. He'll abide in you and dwell in you. You ask by faith. You believe you receive when you pray. Now you have the ability to speak with other tongues. So we begin to pray. Come on, let's begin to pray. There's just somebody that may be doing that right now. You may say, okay, I haven't been praying in my heavenly language. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to stir up. Stir up that ability. Stir up that ability now. Pray out these things. It's time to pray, folks. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. The Holy Spirit is here in the earth with us as the body of Christ, ready to fill anyone who wants to be filled, to lead you, guide, and direct you wherever you need to go. In Jesus' mighty, holy, majestic name, amen. Uh, praise God. Well, y'all, um, at this time, if you desire to sow, uh, there's information that's coming up on your screen. There's an opportunity for prosperity. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. If he's leading you to direct you to sow, sow. Um, I think it's important to sow. Listen, freely you receive, freely give. To the degree in which you've eaten and fed off of this word tonight, however you receive, sow accordingly. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. Praise God. We pray for your increased prosperity and success. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. But I love you all so much, and I appreciate you for tuning in. I didn't intend on taking this long, but God knows what he wanted to do, and so I'm going to follow him. So, listen, once again, on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say thank you for showing up tonight and tuning in. We love you guys. Appreciate you. May heaven shine upon you. May God's favor rest heavy upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Love you. See you next time. Peace.